There is a love you said you'd give to me Soon as you were free Will it ever be? Where is the love? <laughs> What's up, y'all? This is Ty. I know y'all saying, Ty, that song ain't got nothing to do with this video. That ain't got nothing to do with Greenleaf, but it does. This is for y'all, because I'm like, where's the love? Where are all my Greenleafers at? Because last season, y'all had the comment section popping. Y'all was viewing my reviews. I mean, some of y'all are still here, but I'm like, where's everybody? Am I the only one still watching the show? Y'all ain't got no love for me no more. <laughs> but anyway... Welcome, welcome. This is the. I'm, I'm just playing. Maybe I'm just playing. No, serious. I'm just playing. I appreciate those who are still holding me down in the comment section. Shoutouts to Simply Be Yourself 100, Jennifer Calhoun, Tracy Custis, June BLC, Miss Tasha, Tia Divine, and Randall Brown, um, and all the other ones leaving comments. Uh, so here we are, season five, the final season, episode six. So let's get right on to it. Let's start off with the bishop and Lady May. The bishop was supposed to have a doctor's appointment, but homeboy don't want to go to the doctor's appointment because he's so pissed off because Rochelle is back in town. Y'all remember Rochelle? She's out for blood. She hates the green leaves. She believes that Ro she believes that the bishop had her father killed. She can't stand the green leaves, so she just wants revenge, revenge, revenge. So. The bishop is fuming now. He calls the FBI. He's trying to figure out why Rochelle is in town, whatever. And he learns that she's no longer a person of interest with the FBI. So he's really mad. And he's like, you know, they, she's trying to destroy my life and whatnot and all these different things. And um, Lady May is still like, you had an appointment. You need to go take that physical. You need to take that physical. And the bishop says, no. He says, um, that's not priority right now. That's why I was like, Bishop, bruh, you're wrong. That is priority. Your health is always first. You always put your health first. Always. Because you're trying to out, you're trying to fight your enemies, but you can't do that if you're sick, brother. What if something wrong? Go get the physical. Then you, you know, get the physical. Then you go fight what you got to do. But go get the physical. That's what I'm saying. Go get the physical. But, you know. So, yeah. Tara is expected to come over because now Lady May wants to grill her. And figure out, okay, Rochelle is in town. Have you been talking to Rochelle this whole time? I'm trying to give you this house because the Lord told me to give you, the, give you this house. But you in cahoots with this chick. And so Tara's like, that's still my sister. And Lady May's like, and that's, this is still my house. And I'm trying to figure these things out. And she said, um, they pretty much, she was saying, I understand Lady May. And she's saying, but, you know, I didn't know she was coming i thought she was in mexico i didn't know she was coming and all this and she said but you know i still believe now especially since being here that i need to take this house and so lady mays you know she's a little on the fence now and they're like well if you do how do we know that um rochelle will be satisfied with that and that's what i was thinking too like rochelle's gonna want more than just taking the house and she ain't gonna want to turn the house into no uh orphanage or whatever it is Tara's trying to do. She wants, Rochelle wants revenge and Rochelle wants money and all that. Rochelle probably like, nah, we going, I don't know. I don't trust that. So they're still in that conversation and like, well, hopefully we could come to something, but come to some sort of agreement. But this Rochelle character, speaking of, let's move on to Rochelle and the Bishop. What a scene that was in that raggedy bar that you know the bishop is turning into a church and he's in there i guess that was the lawyer whoever he was speaking to about all of you know the maybe that was the real estate agent whatever the final touches and what they need to do and whatever to get this bar up and running i mean get this church up and running and here comes rochelle played lovely by the lovely latoya luckett and she's like throwing shots she says let me look at my notes here she says, um, oh, Bishop, wow, what a fall from, she was just throwing, just sticking a knife in and turning it in. And, oh, man, you got kicked out your church. Now you over here at this little raggedy bar trying to turn this into a church. She's like, oh, you know, she says something like, well, you might as well, you know, burn the place down with me in it. Shots fired because she still thinks 
that the bishop killed her father. You know, and she said, God knows what you did, and that's why you, you're not flourishing. He knows what you did. And she said, um, you know, I know what you did that, and, you know, that's why you're going down. And um, she said, what was it? Let me look at my notes here. Until you admit the role that you played in the death of my father, nothing you do will stand. And that reminded me of, um, what was that? In Color Purple, Till You Do Right By Me. <laughs> That's what I thought of instantly. Till You Do Right By Me. But she told him, she said, until you admit your parts in this, nothing you do will stand. And the bishop was pissed off. Bishop said, you are crazy. You are delusional, girl. You insane. You need help. I didn't have nothing to do with that. And that 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 was a great scene. That was some good acting because I seen the anger in her face. I seen the anger in his face. And she said, you know what? Basie should have killed you when he had the chance. I said, oh, ooh. So we know she's not trying to hear it. She is convinced that the bishop had something to do with the murder of her father. And she wants off with the bishop's head. She wants the green leaves done, done 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 and done that's what she does that's what she wants let's move on down to charity case grace and yusuf but you know what? i can't even call her charity case in this episode because i actually in this episode i was feeling charity i like charity in this episode i did i really did so um yusuf phil's father comes to town after hanging up the phone on the Greenleaf girls. He comes to town and he goes to the house and Charity's like, can I help you? And he's like, no, but I can help you. I'm here to help you. And so they set up a meeting with Charity, Grace, Darius. Oh, and before I go into that, Darius called Grace and told Grace about something with some files and those files got deleted, which shows how dangerous and powerful the Whitmore dude is because he's deleting files and getting people fired and things like that. So they're having this conversation and they're mentioning what they know. And Yusef, Phil's father, he's grumpy and sarcastic. He's like, when Darius is telling him what he found out, he's like, oh, that's obvious. And then they are talking about that, that lending company that um, Phil's mother used to work for, which is, has some connections to the Whitmores. And it's predatory lending. That's what we find out. That no good Whitmore was selling these targeting poor people, giving them second mortgages, and then snatching their house from under them. Mm -mm -mm. And he was using Phil's mother as the black, uh, what do you call that, figurehead, while he was the, really the one, you know, raking in all the dough. She would, she would be the one that greeted the poor black folks who was getting these second mortgages and getting their houses uh, taken from under them. So Whitmore does not want this uncovered. Uh, Yusef says, you know, he tells it all, but he's like, I don't want to be involved. You know, I got some issues going on. I got a little back history, so I don't want y'all getting into, get into my business, and I don't want, you know, digging up. I want to be totally underground. But if you find this other person, they can vouch for what I'm saying. And so then they like, okay, cool. But Charity then says to him, you've got to tell Phil because Phil ain't going to believe it when it comes from me. And of course he's not. You know, he ain't, he's gonna, he ain't going to believe Grace. I mean, he's not going to believe Charity. So Charity takes him over to the church where Phil and Judy are. And another great scene because here goes Judy trying to be funny. Oh, who's this? Your boyfriend? Nah, this is his father. But Phil was not happy seeing Yusef. But what a great scene between those two actors, too. He wasn't happy seeing Yusef. He didn't believe the whole thing about the predatory lending and the targeting blacks. And Judy with that whole stupid, my father loves the blacks. I was like, yeah, okay, Judy. You love the blacks, You could, apparently. And so, <laughs> so Phil was not pleased and Phil was about to call the police and he went down the laundry list of the things that his father did not do and how he treated his mother and things like that. And he was about to call the police and Charity snatched the phone and threw it to the ground and told him, what's wrong with you? But Phil still cussed his daddy out, he, he told his daddy off and 
it hurt his father's feelings. But I think they're going to they're going to reconcile. They're going to speak again because I think that opened up something in Phil. And, you know, Charity told him, she said, you know what? People usually say this. I'm going to pray for you. And they say it like an insult. But, you know, I'm going to really pray for you because God really, he, he really needs to help you, bro. He really needs to help you. So she leaves with um, Yusuf. Now, here come Judy still trying to, you know, lean on Phil. And Phil was like, get off me. Like, he, Phil, I don't, Phil is not feeling this Judy chick. He's like, I don't really want to be with her. He don't really want to be with her. He want that chocolate charity. That's what I think he, but, but see, his career, he's putting his career in front of his love life. That's what it is. So now he's going to be stuck with dry little Judy. And he know he don't want Judy. And Judy's like, I, I was like, I laughed at that scene. Because I'm like, Judy, he don't want you, girl. He don't want you. He don't want you. All right, what else happened in this episode? Jacob and Chlamydia. I mean, Jacob and Clarissa. Not Chlamydia. I'm sorry, that was it. immature. That was immature. Jacob and Clarissa. They have a... Um, they're going to go to that this whole thing with their son to explain to the son about the whole separation and things. And he asked her for joint custody. And she's like, no, I'm not going to give you joint custody. You're not going to get it. No, you're not. Whatever. Meanwhile, Zora goes to Sophia. Now, Zora is Jacob's and um, Clarissa's child, their daughter. And she has this plan that she's going to the new school. And the new school is in New York City. And she's putting her audition tape together, whatever. And she's like, I'm leaving tomorrow. Like, she got her ticket ready and everything. This divorce is affecting her. And she's saying it's not, but it is. She's saying, you know, I got to do me. They doing them. I'm about to do me. So that's what she wants to do. But Sophia ends up telling Clarissa and Jacob and so they kind of confront her and Clarissa was going doing this whole approach you ain't going to New York but Jacob was doing he he handled it better in my opinion he was like listen we can negotiate we could make a deal how about you know we help you with it whatever but you know you could stay with cousin somebody such and such at Hoboken you know, or you could do this that and the third he kind of like softened it a little bit Clarissa wasn't having it she was like listen she ain't going and that's that but I like how Jacob smoothed that over. And I think, I like the scene with Clarissa where she said to Jacob, you know, I like what you said and you kept saying we, us, and finally you felt like the husband I wanted you to be. She don't want to be divorced. She's so, she don't want to, but it's over. Your relationship is over. Your relationship is toxic. It needs to end. He don't love you. It needs to end, y'all. It, it, it needs to end. But she had a change of heart and she said, you know what? You can have shared custody. You can have joint custody. And I thought that was very nice of her. I thought that was very nice. Like, good, because children need both parents. They need both parents. Even if they're split or whatever, the kids need both parents. That's, listen, that's how I feel. So, let's move on down to, who we moving on down to? Let's go on down to AJ Noah and Grace. So it looks like Noah and AJ are going to be, they found a place or whatever. And Noah has gotten AJ to see this doctor and get his medication so he can handle, get this treatment, whatever. And AJ seems to be in good spirits. And Grace was really surprised. Like, okay, what, how did you get him? To, how did you convince him and all these other things? And, you know, I'm glad that happened. I like to see that. And I did like the playful banter, how AJ was kind of teasing him, like, oh, I see you two. Oh, you two lovebirds, whatever. And then Noah also mentioned, he said, well, listen. Um, he said, listen here. We're going to get this place. You know, I'm getting a place not too far from my mother's place. You're more than welcome to stay there just in case y'all lose this house or whatever. You can come stay with us. I see what you're doing in Noah. He said, strictly platonic. No, no strings attached. Bro, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing, Noah. You thinking you can convince her to come stay with y'all. 
and then you slowly ease in and work your way in. I see what you're doing. Clever, clever. That's what you're doing. That whole, oh, uh, you know, no strings at the shores, no strings attached. Yeah, okay. You want us to believe that. And he also said that he would help her um, with that whole issue with the caretaker because we got to find out that issue with the caretaker and all those things and, you know, to connect all this stuff and find out who does this house really belong to, which will is the correct will. It's so much. It's so much going on. Really good. That was really good stuff. Um, what else happened? Ah, I got to go back to the teenagers for a second. So, Sophia and Zora. Zora's not going to go to New York right away. She's made a deal with her parents or whatever. But the funny scene with that was she told, um, she told Sophia, she said, well, you know, she, Sophia said, you're not mad. She said, you a snitch. But guess what? I told your mother about your little uh, breast being exposed all over the internet. So now we even. So I like that. That was funny. She got back at her. That was hilarious. And um, such a good episode. So many things going on. Let me check. You know, my brother got to make sure he, he touched on everything. Um, let's bring it on back to the bishop and the first lady. They had an interesting conversation where the bishop's like, you are not giving this house to them. I don't care, this, that, and the third. And you know, first lady got up on her high horse a little bit and she was saying stuff about stuff. He said, you always talk, you're second talking about all this stuff. What about your dirty laundry? My dirt, and he was right. He said, my dirty laundry is out there. You're saying what's right. When are you going to confess and tell everybody about this 40-year-old secret, this 40-year-old lie that you've been holding on to? When are you going to tell that? He said, you have the nerve to be telling Jacob about his life and telling him what he needs to do with his relationship. But get off that high horse. Stop with this holy roller stuff when you was tipping and dipping basically that's what you know how to paraphrase he was like you was tipping and dipping slipping and sliding and made a whole baby with another dude what's his name lionel that's how he, that's basically what he was telling him get off this holy roller stuff when you have not confessed your sins and he was right and that made lady may decide to tell the family the rest of the family but i see what she did lady may waited to Clarissa left <laughs> with the son, she made sure she waited till Clarissa left. Then she was like, "I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna tell my secret," and she told it to her kids and her grandkids. And you know, Charity pulled up, and of course, Grace knew already. And she said, "Yeah, I was slipping and sliding. I slipped up and made an outside baby. Grace is the product of that, and Lionel was the daddy." But your father's fine, and it doesn't matter. We're all still family. And that was like, whoa. And I love that scene with the siblings, Grace, Jacob, Charity, sitting there. And they're getting uh, Charity's drunk. And she's like, you know, this is like, this is a night. Like, just what she was saying, like, you try so hard to be perfect, but this is a train wreck a plane wreck or something like that she said and just their conversation with uh, charity was like who else knew about this and how they were teasing grace saying well you know no that's where you get all that light skin from because mama ain't that light i thought all of that was very funny and playful and i like how jacob said to her you know i don't really care about that that ain't on my mind he's more worried about what his son is going to think of him with, you know, now that he's divorcing the mother and he cheated on the mother and all that stuff, he's worried about what his son is going to think about him. And they were having that nice, I like that sibling. Reminds me of me and my siblings. We get together. We have a great time together. And I like that. And I like to see them in that space. And Charity was funny. She was a little tipsy. I thought that all of that was funny. And then they get the phone call from, uh, not they, Grace gets the phone call from Darius saying, we got him, we got him, come to my house, we got him. I'm like, yes, we got Whitmore. Uh, one of those uh, witnesses panned out, one of those people that Yusef was talking about, they panned out, it worked out, we got him. So she goes over to Darius's home 
And I knew right then, as soon as she went there, I was like, something is wrong. I could feel it, something is wrong. When, and then she knocked on the door, I was like, oh gosh, what's gonna happen? I thought somebody was gonna snatch her up. I was like, God, please don't let nobody snatch her up. She called him, he didn't answer the phone. And as she's, you know, we see a car pulling in and I think that was, what's his name? Fernando, Antonio, something like that. And he's like, stay out of it, mind your business, all this other stuff. And he tried to grab her, like, I'll tell you where Darius is, come with me. And he pretty much threatened her, basically. And that's where the episode ended. And I was like, Dad, it was so good, y'all. It was good. I really enjoyed this episode. It was good. It's getting, it's, it, it's, I'm, I'm so curious as to what's going to happen. What happened to Darius? Where is he? Whitmore and them, they, they like that? They gangster like that? Like, y'all snatching people up and, Dad, this, it was a really good episode. Is there some... Con oh, it's, go it's a really good episode. And Rochelle, what is she up to? What's going to happen? Are they going to give this house away? This whole thing. We got so many things to figure out. The will. All the stuff. The stuff about the caretaker. All of that. Really good stuff. So, tell me, you guys. What did you think of the episode? I know I can't wait till the next one. So, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Look, I'm, I'm speaking into existence. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you all in the next video. And if you haven't, check out my fitness journey videos. And I will also be, think I'm going to start reviewing two more shows that I've started watching. And that's it. That's all I got. I will see you in the next video. And you all be blessed.